Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube, it's your girl Honey, and today's video is going to be Venus in Aquarius. So, um, Venus in Aquarius, this is a real interesting place to have your Venus, you know, if you're having, if you do have your Venus in Aquarius, you would be a sun sign of Aquarius, obviously, you would be a Pisces sun, you would be an Aries sun, you would be a, a Capricorn sun, or a Sagittarius sun sign okay what is your Venus your Venus is um the planet of romance of love it's your idea of love and it's also how you love okay and put your Mars in there it's also what you're sexually attracted to mm. so um um Aquarius is home to the 11th house on the natal chart Aquarius is the ruler of Uranus and um, Uranus is all about sudden, you know, surprises and sudden events, um, weird, unusual. And the eleventh house is all about your networks, your, um, the your your friends, your friendship groups, the people around you. It can be social life. It can be online, social media, even. You know, it's all about your your network. So that can all play into fact when it comes to the eleventh house. So. You people who are Venus and Aquarius, what can I tell you about you guys? I'm pretty sure most of you have heard the same thing, which is, why are you so detached? You know, Aquarius energy has that detachedness to them, but I need you guys to not look at it like it's the worst thing in the world because we all have things about us that is negative, positive it's just about working with it with us work working with your own strengths and weaknesses okay so don't look at it like it's a bad thing it, it is what it is I find people who have their Venus and Aquarius end up in a lot of relationships or situationships with people um that are very overbearing for them very attention seeking and very dramatic and over the top they end up with people who are not for them and they need to understand that you guys should be dating people who are who carry a lot of Aquarius energy someone who will allow you to do your thing you know someone who um it's very strange because although Sagittarius is a fire sign they are in sextile to each other however they do have a lot of similarities in the sense of being detached and and um the need for travel and attracted to different and um, attracted to someone that's very different from them and this is where Aquarius comes into play when it comes to Aquarius energy there's like an element of like okay I feel very uncomfortable right now because you are getting a little bit too intense you know your, your space invading me you're getting too emotional it's a bit uncomfortable it's almost like a like a cringy feeling for you guys like you don't want to get too too heavy However, you know, you guys can definitely get a little bit heavy um, if you have Pisces energy. Pisces, like my dad's a Pisces, he's got a grand trine in water, his Mars is in, Pi is, is in Scorpio. So <laughs> these people that have Pisces suns and their Venus is in Aquarius, there is a bit of like conflict and possibly some contradiction going on because Pisces is all about serving of the other person but we've also got to look at what's aspected to your Venus as well because um, aspects would, would definitely give you a different type of, um, of um, way of loving somebody so we will talk about aspects later on in the video right but anyway um, someone who has their Venus in Aquarius they're going to be attracted to a type of to an Aquarius type of person so when it comes to dating, you need to be with someone who will allow you to take your time out to do whatever it is that, what, that you do. You know, it could be humanitarian stuff. It could be on, you could be on YouTube looking at conspiracy theories because you guys are into conspiracy theories. You know, you guys are into um, human rights, even things that, things to do with politics as well, you know, anything that mentally stimulates the mind, that is where you guys are interested in. So when it comes to um, dating, you have to be with someone who can 
mentally stimulate you. You guys are not attracted to people purely based on the physical, you know, purely based on the physical. But if you are an Aries, that's another contradiction again, because if you're an Aries sun, you're going to be attracted to someone of the sexual energy because Aries is the Mars and Mars is sexual energy. But to keep that Aries sun around, you know, if their Venus is in Aquarius, you have to mentally stimulate them like crazy. And the mental stimulation is usually to do with talking about, not even just talking, but debating, being able to hold debates with people, talking about things that, things like politics and human rights and, you know, um, things that a lot of other people may find a bit overwhelming or boring, you know, um, it's how you get into an Aquarius's brain, um, their mind. Oh shit. Now Aquarius has this fear and this is what they tend to do, um, to kind of keep a wedge between them and someone else is Aquarius doesn't like to get too, too close with someone, you know, too quickly. Um, but if they feel themselves getting very close to someone, they tend to take a few steps back and distance themselves because, you know, they like to, in order for them to maintain, um, <clears throat> in, in order for them to build relationships, they have to be friends with someone first because remember the 11th house is all about building networks and, um, your, your groups and they tend to prefer to be around you um, in a group of friends rather than do a one-to-one -one because it can be very, very draining for them. You know, if they are um, with you one-to-one, -one, you know, they'll probably go away for a couple of days, maybe a few weeks or whatever, and they might see you after a while, but it's just how they kind of work on um, building their relationship with you. I find also because Aquarius is fixed energy, you know, um, they do tend to be the person who leads in their relationships because fixed energy does not like to compromise or empathize with others. This is crazy, right? Um, I was chatting to this guy and he's an Aquarius and I asked him, well, what was you doing today? How was your day? And he said, well, I was applying for some jobs, you know, in his mundane Aquarius voice, right? I was applying for, for some jobs today. I was like, okay, what did you apply for? And he was like, I saw like a bailiff job, but I had to apply for it. They, they get paid a lot of money. And I'm like, bailiff? You know, I'm a Venus in Pisces and my Jupiter trines my Venus. And I'm not here for a job that makes someone's life hell. I'm not here for that, okay? And I'm, I'm here to help people. That is all I like to do is help people. So anyway, that threw me off because I was like, why would you apply for that job? And he was like to me, the reason why I applied for it is because they get paid lots of money and those people, if they can't afford to have finance, they should not be, you know, taking out credit. And he went on a tangent talking about how people shouldn't be, um, should owe what, what they, um, should pay what they owe. And we're going back and forth with each other over the phone about this. And then I just kind of left it and I was like, oh, okay, well, fine. So with that being said, with that being said, these people need to date someone who can um, relate to to their views and their views are usually very different from um, the majority. Like the Aquarius is the minority, you know, and they always have an opinion that other people just don't fathom or just don't agree with because they are very, very different. I've also noticed as well, because my Venus is in the 11th house, if you don't know, most of you stub to me know my shit, right? But my Venus is in the 11th house, Aquarius home. I find Venus and Aquarius people, they tend to pick their partners from social groups that they feel comfortable in. And it, Aquarius is all about the comfortability. And for example, they might be, um, they might go to like an art exhibition um, class or group or whatever, and they're very much comfortable in that environment. They might go to a conspiracy theorist um, theory group. I don't know what you guys are into, but they might find someone there. They tend to find their networks or their relationships through the, the places that they tend to network a lot. 
And while I was sitting here thinking about my history and stuff, like I tend to gravitate more to the males around me um, based on what groups that I'm in as well, which is a very Venus in the 11th house kind of situation. Venus in Aquarius is very individual, it's very free, you know, these people cannot be like possessed, you can't be jealous around them because this will just create conflict, this is why they, they don't get on, this is why they don't get on with Scorpio at all because Scorpio energy has these, this, um, the, the jealousy and um, the, the possessiveness and the overbearing energy and Aquarius can't can't deal with that shit. It's, it's too heavy for them. Aquarius need to have this this type of freedom in their relationships where okay, you know, I I need to have a friend in a lover, right? So we can go out and do trips and have fun and stuff. But then when we get back, you know, I'll I'll call you, okay? I'll, I'll give you a ring. Don't worry, I'll I'll call you. And what it is, it's about them getting back to their individuality, their, them feeling a little bit normal um, and how they feel normal is just by spending the time on their own and just literally doing what it is that makes them happy, just having their own space. So they cannot be with someone who is, you know, very on top of them and they tend to be, they tend to end up in very unconventional relationship situations, you know, if like, for example, you know, my parents were together my mum's an Aquarius sun, her Venus is in Pisces, dad's an, dad's an Aquarius, Venus, uh, Venus in Aquarius, my dad is a Pisces sun, right? And there's even more combinations, like my dad's moon is in Aries and my mum's moon is in Leo, right? So anyway, they live together, you know, and they planned me because I'm an Aries sun, Venus is in Pisces, okay? Mars is in Aquarius, they planned me. And, um, my dad got offered a property from through social housing, which he applied for like 10 years before he met my mum. And my mum just said, yeah, it's an opportunity, take it. Any normal woman, right, not saying she's not normal, but Aquarius energy would, you know, for, <laughs> Aquarius was so cool. Aquarius would let their spouse go and live on their own, you know. And my dad said, okay, I'll, I'll take it, but I don't have to, you know. And... They, they lived separately, but they didn't. My dad was there, was at my house every day. You know, he was there every day. And sometimes we're just gonna stay there at his house for a couple nights, maybe. But Aquarius energy works like that in an unconventional type of way, um, especially the women. The women are not the kind of females to literally be the typical house. They're not, look, let's just go back, rewind, yeah. The, the women are not the kind of women that are that enjoy doing mundane housework, cooking every day, cleaning every day, being the typical nurturing cancer woman. They can't stand that shit. They are all about having opinions. They tend to be leaders in their relationships because, you know, they tend to be very strong women, you know, and they usually have like a right they're fighting for and they tend to be really intelligent, unpredictable, you know, unorthodox, all of these things. And it's not seen, it's not what society deems as being normal. And that is what a Venus in um, Aquarius male is really attracted to. A woman who has an opinion, who's strong, you know, and who is very different from what is actually out there. And what I noticed as well with Aquarius energy, Venus and Aquarius, right? These people tend to end up in relationships with people that are very different from them. These people end up in relationships um, that their family, their friends say, look, he's not, no, he's not for you, honey. You know, uh, he's got this going on. You know, he's got, you know, 25 babies, mothers, you know, that's not what you want. But Aquarius being the fixed sign that it is, it's like, no, fuck you, I do what I want. You know, strength, I'm strong. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna date this man. I don't care how many babies, mothers that he has, I'm going to go and date him. They are strong-willed people, just strong. Now, this is gonna sound so weird, but I'm, I keep it real over here, and this is not everyone's situation either. 
But um, because when you look at someone's chart, right, um, and they have aspects to Uranus, um, a lot of an Aquarius stellium, for example, a lot sometimes people can be seen to be of asexual. Don't know if you guys have heard of it. I hope I'm describing it in the right manner. The asexual um, is very much Aquarius energy, Uranus energy. And these are people who tend to not have any desire to have sex. It's more about building up um, relationships with people, stimulating conversations, and um, having that, that, there's just not this urge or this attraction to um, to have sex. And I'm not sure if it's to do with your sexuality, um, your sexual attraction. Um, if you like male or females, I can't remember what it what it is. Remember I said Aquarius is all about um, difference, differences and, and weirdness. Uranus is all about differences and weirdness. And that's the reason why um, asexuality, asexual is linked to Aquarius stelliums, Venus and Aquarius, aspects to Uranus. So people who have Uranus conjunct your, um, your Venus in Aquarius, this would make you possibly someone who might be a little bit promiscuous or seen as promiscuous, right? And don't look at it as a bad thing because Aquarius energy is all about um, freedom, you know, doing what, what you feel is the right thing to do, doing something different to what you've been told all of your fucking life to be, right? Um, having your Uranus conjunct your Venus would make you someone who may not have an urge to be in a relationship. It can also make you a sex addict as well. Um, this can be linked to being promiscuous, who knows? But you can be someone who's not here for um, a regular conventional relationship. It just having um, Aquarius in the home, having having Uranus in the home of Aquarius in, in its home place, it just intensifies the whole um, idea of unconventional relationships. There could possibly have been some type of early introduction into sex as well with um, Uranus conjunct Venus. And like going back to the whole asexual thing, like coming off that subject, how these people, how these people get turned on. And it's crazy because in my Venus and um, Aries video, how an Aries person gets turned on is they will create dramas and conflict and they want to have the makeup sex immediately after. And um, with Aquarius, Aquarius likes to feel mentally stimulated off like through a debate like they are very much into people who can make them feel like wow you know she she knows her stuff wow you know that's what makes my dick hard things like that makes them feel like okay like this person knows what they're talking about and i'm sexually ready it, it it's like it keeps the spice fiery it keeps the spice going I find someone who has their Venus in Aquarius, they're not the, they're not going to be the most romantic sign um, or the most romantic person unless you've got like a Pisces sun and other Pisces elements, um, maybe even a Cancer moon, Cancer moon, possibly some Taurus, maybe Taurus as well. Because the thing is with Aquarius, they're not. Venus and Aquarius, it's not, it's not affectionate, so, um, and it's not romantic, it's just very, um, it's more based on friendship, it's important friendship, and when you mix it with the other planets like Pisces, when you put feminine energy next to it, Pisces is feminine, Taurus and Cancer is all feminine energy, when you mix that into um, this person's chart, Venus and Aquarius, it gives this person more of a gentle vibe, and it does create some type of conflict as well, because um, sometimes with a Pisces, like Pisces can be seen as very romantic and, you know, they're all about the fantasies and, you know, the illusions, but it can be very deceptive, okay, to a lot of people. So when you first meet Pisces, they're very, wow, you know, 
um, they, they've taken me on, on a date, they're talking to me, two twos, his Venus in, um, his Venus in Aquarius, he's disappeared, he needs his space, and also 12th house uh, is home to Pisces, it's all about isolation, so it all, like, these people, Venus and Aquarius people really value their time. The thing about Venus and Aquarius is they tend to be quite popular people, because, you know, the 11th house is all about your networks and who you know, I find their relationships with people are more on a surface level than personal. So I would never get too worried if you are someone, you know, who's concerned about your partner, you know, knowing lots of people, because most likely it's not really on a personal level anyway. Do you know what I forgot to mention? And don't take this in the wrong way. Like I keep it all the way real on my YouTube. I talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, in astrology. Like I don't hide nothing. But um, I noticed this going back to the how they attract as well. Like Venus in, Venus in Aquarius energy is notorious for, um, not notorious, but it can be energy that is seen to date people that are very, very different from them, like I've said. So this can be someone, you know, who might carry disabilities as well there's a program on tv it's on it's on channel four in the uk and it's called the undateables and a lot of people you know tweet stuff like oh my god how can someone date someone like that you know and these the people that are on the show are people who carry severe disabilities you know it, it could be someone who um is in a wheelchair who's not able to who's not able body it could be someone who might be blind it, it, it could be anything right and um, they have regular, they have able-bodied people on there that decide that, that they want to date these people. And when you watch them interact, you can clearly see the able-bodied person doesn't feel any different. Like they are here for the mental stimulation and that is it. There's not no sexual attraction in like image wise. And I don't, they, they don't care about that shit. They care about what's going on up here. And that's what's really important. That's what's um, typical for a Venus and Aquarius person. It really is. Um, unless you've got Aries going on. Aries is too, a bit too much. Maybe a bit of Pisces. But Pisces, not maybe not so much Pisces. Not, not so much. Um, Sagittarius maybe. Capricorn, maybe not so much. But yeah, it's very Aquarius energy. Like Venus in Aquarius, people would date someone based off just the mental alone. And you know what? Everyone in this world needs to find love. There's someone out there for everybody. So that is one thing that I think is wonderful about a Venus in Aquarius type of person. So um, that is my video, which is it's, it's way too long but that's my video on venus in aquarius i hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed it and i will see you on the next one people take care